Alright my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of our community build, Jammy Conservation Park. Ladies and gents, very excited to bring you a second episode uh, this week. If you've missed uh, the last episode that went out, which was episode 3, that's linked above my friends. Uh, you No need to vote on those polls or anything like that anymore because uh, the results of the polls are going to be revealed uh, very, very shortly. But do feel free to go and watch the episode. Um, I had so many comments. It was so good to see so many new suggestions uh, for what square to potentially unlock what we should be building next what we should be doing lots of positive comments about what we've managed to achieve uh, so far as well but uh, i guess we should just crack on with today's episode because like i've just said we've got so many comments to get through in our feedback and comment section uh, so you're going to see ladies and gents the results of the poll from last episode and it was the all important poll of should we move forward 10 years and as you can see 80 percent of you have voted yes to move forward now the game is paused um, as a result um what i've decided ladies and gents and it's uh, regardless of if you say yes or no i am going to start the game paused every single episode and then once we know the result of the poll then we'll move it forward uh, the best way we see fit but as we're going to be moving forward 10 years we might as well press that play button and uh, let it get moving now before i unlock the square there's a couple of things i want to cover with you uh, that um i was did last episode but didn't show you and probably should have now, the first one is that um, we have started training up our staff, um, but we're going to be uh, you know, delving a little deeper into that in today's episode when we get to the staff and animal section anyway, but um, someone did say we need to start training them, so that's exactly what I've done. As you can see, the little green star means that they're in the process of um, doing that. Uh, the other thing that I am actually going to do before we actually move forward is I'm going to up the ticket prices. You know what's funny? I always go here. That's not a ticket. That's a fake ticket office. We have to remember that we built that just to do that uh, and people have been asking uh, said that we should really raise ticket prices and uh, you're going to see when we get to the comments that someone's asked for a particular amount of money so um, that's basically uh, the amount of money that I'm going to raise it to um, so yeah that's going to be that and uh, we'll just leave that plain then uh, ladies and gents now today's episode is going to be very comment heavy because of the amount of stuff that you guys have been getting in um, so we're going to get to that shortly but the all important square which one are we going to unlock now I kind of gave it away because I started going towards it but we're actually going to be unlocking square 10 in today's episode and the big reason for that is um, I've kind of tallied up all the votes for the squares and uh, 10 got one, two, what's that? One, oh god, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Got six votes, ladies and gents unbelievably popular and uh, a lot of those votes were very similar uh, there's a very um there's almost like a theme that kind of um came came over us with the comments this time around so um yeah we got ten, uh, six votes for 10 we got three for eight uh two for two and then there was one on uh one three four five and seven so yeah we got lots of uh, you know you know votes for certain squares this week but square 10 was the one that won overall so um without further ado do let's delete square 10 and then we can move on to the comments and feedback section uh, and really start thinking about what's going to happen in today's episode which is very very exciting uh, it does mean that we've got a brand new area uh, being unlocked and it does mean that we've got uh, you know potential to do some more expansion for the conservation park which uh, everyone is very happy with the first expansion i'm just hoping i can make the second expansion go as as smoothly as the first so there you have it ladies and gents a brand new area of the zoo is now open and uh, in the blink of an eye we're going to be right back for that feedback and comment section so let's crack on Okay, my friends, so here we are, feedback and comments time. We have got loads to get through in today's episode. Uh, as you can see, I'm giving you a nice view of the crocodiles while we go through the uh, while we go through this in today's episode. Um, hopefully, you will enjoy. Um, and um, yeah, let's just get on with it, shall we, ladies and gents? So, um, if I miss your comment, I do apologise. Um, obviously, there was only so many comments I could get through, um, you know, for today's episode without it being too long. I've tried to include absolutely everyone but if i have missed anybody's comment i apologize um 
I have read every single one of them and I actually have a list of things to do in today's episode. So I think that just proves how much uh, I've actually read uh, your comments. But the first one that's coming in from Zach Prince, who I think maybe is a first time commenter. Uh, he's put making sure Jamie has the appropriate number of staff is important. I think upping the ticket prices should help offset the new costs of hiring. Uh, you did a great job with the front of house and the new Crocodile expansion, but I think building anything new should not be done without hiring a proper number of keepers and staff. Yes, I, I think that is very clear. And as we go through today's episode, you are going to see that a lot of people have actually requested, you know, new staff. Um, you know, they've requested that we start, you know, training up the staff we've already got as well. And uh, we're going to be doing that in the animals and staff section of today's episode. Um, I think that's going to be very, very important to do that uh, today. Um, Alexis Doris is the next uh, comment. Um, I think putting a security checkpoint and other backstage stuff in Square 10 is a good idea. I also think colouring the croc walls uh, go away green, adding signage uh, is good, as you mentioned, Dan. Uh, I also agree that adding and training up staff is more important than building uh, in too many more animals to take care of. Uh, since we've got plenty of habitat animals already for now, we'll need a vet and their office before we continue uh, as well, and maybe a quarantine, uh, both of which um, could be included in the backstage space if we unlock square 10 yep very very much agree uh and it is uh, you know going to be very very important that uh you know going forward uh next up we've got one from louis once again and uh, he's put some suggestions uh hire some more keepers a guard and a guy who takes care of the park's cleanliness i forgot the name um an exit sign um if I was a if I was a guest, I wouldn't be able to find the exit. To be honest, oh, that's actually really fair. Uh, green back wall for the Gario enclosure and uh, up the pri up the entrance price for the expansion. I'd like to see square two because you can build a proper staff hub uh, so that you don't have to worry about staff facilities in the near future. Uh, I'd like to see a clinic with a small enclosure for injured or sick animals slash uh, a veterinarian, uh, a mechanics department, a few staff rooms, a research center, and a quarantine center. Uh, I know the research center isn't going to work properly sandbox but it would uh, be nice to add uh, realistic addiction anyway i uh, love the series keep them coming yeah I, th I think like a new staff hub uh, is, is looking like a real popular choice um, as you're going to see as we work our way through the comments in today's episode and so is you know staff i i, I anticipate this is going to be actually quite a staff heavy episode i really feel like you guys are starting to manage um you know the zoo very very well uh, next one comes in from official dazzler and he has said i feel if the community move forward not sure why we should take um or go for six seven or eight as it would only really at this time play a factor to the croc area uh, as i like symmetry i'd go with square two so both there both then unlocked either side not sure how to expand but personally i'd use this as a walkthrough area to another part of the park could this be the first time fdx uh, creates a beautiful walkthrough area nothing to do with animals. that's really interesting actually that you mentioned, you know, adding some stuff like that because, uh, you know, zoos are not just about animals, they do have these beautiful gardens, beautiful, area, beautiful areas for you know, uh, people to walk and stuff as well. So, that's really interesting that you've 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 picked up on that. Um, and that's maybe something to think about, right? Jer the Nator has got in touch and has left a comment saying, Amazing work as always. Uh, this generally reminds me of places I've had the fortune of visiting. I love the Toby statue, maybe the croc can get one too one day. Uh, alternatively, Alternatively, the that empty space could be used as a branch off uh, from the path into square 10 uh, to another exhibit for the guests to see and further facilities for staff and for the rest of the and for the rest of the staff. Uh, one, we need more staff uh, and more trained staff that they can hire some more family members on uh on now that the zoo is getting bigger. Uh, if we expand into 10, at least some part of that does need to address the security situation, which may also entail hiring a security guard. Uh, something that is probably a good idea anyway, as we know there are foolish people out there who will do um, some unsafe and destructive things. Um, uh, free 10 might be the best to expand in for now and maybe the monitor lizard can go back there but i also think we should start uh, moving up that natural path made with seven and eight ultimately getting that uh, flamingo pond into the large square there serving as the natural entrance uh, slash transition point from the conservation center towards the expanding zoo yeah that's really interesting that you say that because you know um, at the moment we are very much just kind of like rep reptile based aren't we we're like a conservation center slash rescue sort 
of like place. Um, and you know, we do, he's talking about an actual transition into like a bigger square up here. Um, because obviously to do the bigger animals, you're going to need a bigger amount of space. That's so really an interesting comment. Um, and I am actually going to be picking up, uh, on some stuff and talking about it when we get to the live part, you know, the staff and animals part, and we're going to go over it a bit more, but at the moment I've got so many comments to get through that, uh, I really want to try and concentrate on that. Uh, and to finish, um, Jelanate has said, uh, I really like the wolf uh, idea due to the backstory that would definitely fit into an expansion in those later squares. Likewise, I think the newly added monkey would fit into the park as well as they are a species often brought into the exotic pet trade only to then have their owners realise they are too much to handle and end up uh, needing a new home. A centaur such as this uh, would definitely consider rescuing some animals like that. Same with birds. Although they are not in the game, they would definitely fit the theme. Maybe some avarian structures could be added uh, along null zones of area. As always, you're as always you're doing an amazing work. Uh, my expectations are being exceeded at every turn. I can really tell you're putting in some proper time and dedication to this project. And because of that, it's really coming along swimmingly. Furthermore, I'm glad to be a proud member of the Conservation Club. Here's to many more members joining and subscribing. I'm excited to see see where this goes really appreciate your comment once again generator uh fantastic ideas there really really I, I really like the avarian idea um i'd have to see what sort of thing i could potentially create and maybe we could get some like bird cages uh into the zoo uh next up we've got a comment from primal gamer um and they've left just left me a couple of comments saying i like it also i'm fine with the just primal uh that's what most people call me a uh, primal on the wall uh, a name for the croc maybe bindi after the crocodile hunter's daughter plus we need to get our boy toby a girl already hashtag uh I'm, I'm, we, we need to start it trending girl for toby we really really do um also one more thing that is the plain wall on the pathway towards the gari and saltwater crocodiles uh outdoor area maybe you could put an arrow sign with a little croc design in the middle uh, i believe he's on about this wall here basically a little arrow saying that this is where the crocs are it's a fantastic idea actually maybe something i can put into practice uh, in today's episode i'm going through all these comments and written a really long list of things to do uh, not only in my build but also in the live section so we're going to have some fun today uh next up we've got night clive another avid commenter and uh, one that returns every single uh, week which is lovely uh, well I've to admit the saltwater uh, croc actually does look great and Jane Doe fits somehow when you follow the story um, some fellow founder in the sewers she didn't tell us the name Mr. McCarter in the Daily Dodo magazine I really like that I like the Daily Dodo uh, that's, that's brilliant that is uh, I was skeptical at first but maybe I'm really thinking too far ahead sometimes uh, same for the playground uh, what to do next one hire the following staff uh, an animal keeper two mechanics do vets and uh, we should train the macazas up to three stars minimum totally agree with that uh, the boss has to be the most skilled employee uh, two buy uh, square eight and build a little plaza to get some distance between the crocs and smaller animals uh, still the mixed lima habitat seems a good idea since they don't really fit one of the big biomes that's country sections uh, from there the tour can begin that's actually a really interesting uh, animal that you've suggested i know you suggested it before but it is actually really interesting uh, three if the visitors are willing to pay more we should increase the prices but I'm no micromanager at all. Going to leave uh, the price aspects to Jammy uh, members who are more into this. And for I back the hashtag girl for Toby. Uh, now let me end by pledging by uh, saying me and the real Macazas feel honoured about being part of, in this project and how much I again like everything that's in it. Uh, all of you stay healthy. Uh, may Jammy CP prosper. Um, an amazing comment and feedback once again, uh, Night Clive. Really appreciate it, uh, buddy. And uh, I will be sure to um, get some of your points on board in today's episode uh next we've got one from john mcclockland i do believe commented uh, last episode um i vote yes moving forward 10 years i think square 10 makes the most sense it can be used as a parking lot expansion security backstage area uh this stuff is going to be super important because i, I think the park will need to hire more staff probably another keeper security guard and another janitor I also think Stephanie would be a good name for the croc as a play on Steve Irwin's name. So, uh, some signs I think would be awesome to include would be staff entrance only by the backstage areas and species survival plans uh, by Toby and the Garials. I also see those signs at zoos if the animal is endangered. Great work as always. It's amazing to see what your imagination allows you to build with a few comments as the foundation. Some really good ideas there actually. Really, really like those ideas. Um, and uh, yeah, the backstage area and the staffing is a real uh, sort of like running theme isn't it in today's episode um 
Sizz Gaming has uh, commented next, and uh, they've left a comment saying, I would vote for Square 8 and put the Nile Monitor next to the salt water because they can swim and they're a smaller species. However, I could also uh, consider Square 10 and maybe add a car park, but I would vote for Square 8. Uh, I wouldn't go 10 years in the future. There might be a little bit of misunderstanding there for you, Sizz Gaming. If you pick a square, that's usually because we're going forward 10 years. Um, if we weren't to move forward 10 years, we can't unlock a square, basically. Um, you, you will find the sort of rules in the description if you're a little bit confused. I don't know if you are, but it just kind of, I feel like you might be just from the way you've written that comment. Uh, for the Saltwater Crocodile name, I would call her Bindi as she's the daughter of the Croc Hunter. Steve Irwin has um, a little commemoration and slight nod to Australia Zoo. Uh, I would keep the same colour pool for the Nile Monitor like the Croc Pools. Also, I would like to join the Conservation Club. Um, a few more comments, my friend, and you can join the comments, the Conservation Club. I'm actually going to, in the live section, tell you what it's going to take for people to make it on that very special wall uh, i can't put everybody on there unfortunately but i'm going to tell you what it's going to take um keep up the good work uh, they also left a comment saying the reptile building um could be a listed building and can't be knocked down that's a very interesting narrative to add to the story and it's something that i have written down basically all the little bits of narrative for the story i'm writing in a I'm writing in like a, a little uh, word uh, word document, and um, at some points in the series, we're gonna do like the story of of the series so far. Um, so yeah, that's there. Uh, Pixel, uh, have I gone too far? I think I might have done. Uh, Silver Fishy's up next. Actually, I vote yes for moving on ten years. Uh, I think Square 10, as you can make more backstage stuff uh, like security buildings or parking. Uh, a good a name for the croc could be Terry after Terry Irwin. Uh, Steve Irwin's wife, great vid, keep them coming. Uh, it seems a very, uh, that seems a theme as well, doesn't it? The Crocodile Hunters family seem to be getting all the votes for the names, which is really, really cool. And all the names have been noted and we're going to rename uh, not only the croc, but some of the other animals with your name suggestions. Pixel Gamer 64 has left a comment saying, uh, hi, I'm new to the uh, it's, uh, I'm new to the suggesting, but I've been watching since episode one. Uh, I think we should move forward 10 years and open up square 10. I was thinking we can make a plaza in square 10 with a massive food court called the Croc Munch Cafe. Uh, we might have to use a new backstage or use the existing backstage by the entrance loading bay and expand it. We also need a uh, security guard, janitor, along with some vendors for the shops. I'm not sure what their names should be yet, but for, um, for the staff, but I'll leave the community to come up with some names. Really, really interesting comment that you think that maybe we should expand into a, a new sort of like restaurant uh, area um that's really interesting that's been put on the list of things to do uh liam horworth another great video following the part problems post uh you did i think we should do one change the entrance price to ten dollars for adults and 850 for children uh train the uh, the current cleaner to master and hire one additional hire security guard and train and hire two more keepers and train the current ones to master as they've been at the park for many many years that's a really really cool comment actually suggesting that the the two keepers we've got should be the master keepers and then everyone else kind of gets trained by them essentially wouldn't they so that's really really cool and i'm going to be putting all of that into uh, good use when we get to the live section of today's episode uh next up Bryn Jones' comment, he said, awesome video as always, uh, and what a fab midweek treat. Going forward, I feel you need to train all the staff, one more star minimum, and then hire one security guard, one, um, one caretaker, two more keepers, and two more vendors for rotation slash shifts, so you don't lose any money in the restaurants. Also, have you added any security cameras? Uh, if if not, you should use them to help. Entrance free um, should be increased to a minimum of ten pound for adults, seven pound for children. As an idea, uh, as you enter the new Croc Zone, I feel a zoo uh, magazine slash booklet vendor car on the right would fit. Uh, one you can move around the zoo to different parts for different times of the day. Uh, in the restaurant, maybe add some condiment table uh, on the wall idea for each habitat uh could you add an adoption plaque as an added detail to the list um of names of guests that have bought an adoption scheme um at the info store oh and a question does the weather change uh, reason why i'm asking is do we need to create more cover outside and increase prices of umbrellas keep it up now the weather doesn't change um and basically what i've done with the weather ladies and gents is i've just left it on like this uh, which is like a clear day basically i believe it stops the, the weather forming um but really that that's up to you guys if you want that to happen so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a poll above for you now to vote on and we're simply going to be leave it as it is or 
she, we go with dynamic weather conditions where the weather can change. Now, obviously, that will play an effect on the zoo. So um, that's a big decision for you guys to make. But do get voting on that poll. And, uh, yeah, then we can kind of tie up, um, you know, that idea. Um, next up, we've got a comment from Sander Nealon. Uh, I voted yes for moving on 10 years, and I would suggest Square 7. I think the park isn't big enough yet to build a, a, a giant backstage area in Square 10. I think getting in more animals will increase the profits uh, and will make uh, more, a more profitable park. With the theme being reptiles, I feel a Nile monitor should be next. Uh, if the gharials won't come out of the building, it could be a possibility to put the Nile monitors outside to keep the gharials in the building. Uh, for the staff, I would hire one guard, one janitor, two keepers. The staff you already have um, should get a training. Most of them work here for over 10 years, uh, so training would make sense. If there is some space left in the future, you should consider squeezing in a quarantine. Uh, that would uh, be it. Keep up the good work. It's a great community series. That's really interesting that you don't think that uh, you know 10 would uh, be big enough for sort of like backstage stuff um because that's kind of gone against the grain on what everybody else has said so it is really interesting to see all the different opinions as we move along um Next up, we've got a comment from Alexander Gardner. He's put, I think it would be cool to have a keeper uh, feeding platform above the saltwater pond for feeding demonstrations like that, like they have in the Crocosseum at Australia Zoo. Uh, in the plaza at the start of the croc expansion, uh, you could make a, a, another statue like you did with Toby the tortoise, but a croc. I think this would also be cool to have uh, as a recurring theme across the park. Love the series. Keep it up. Some really, really cool ideas. I do like the idea of the feeding station, actually, and I'll, uh, I'll be sure to potentially take a look at that uh, in today's episode uh, we've got a comment from kira and she said maybe the next animal something small possibly a peacock walkthrough garden a capuchin monkey or a nile monitor uh, i like the idea of small animals first you don't see a lot of conservation parks starting out with big animals it's really really true uh, and then she, you can just read it yourself but there's a little bit of, of information that she's put potentially about sort of like where she lives um it was after we'd, we'd had a little bit of uh, uh, an exchange in the comments which was really really nice um next up we've got a comment from luke hadley hey fan dan firstly i love the planet zoo content both highland zoo and now jammy uh, i've never missed uh, any uh, thank you for your great videos and this community zoo idea is unique and engaging i would like to request that the next expansion happens in square 10 uh, what i'd like to see is a quarantine facility i believe it is important to place uh, each animal into quarantine before releasing them into the zoo not only is it realistic it also saves both the animals uh, and money should any sickness spread as i have found out from my own zoos as for our new saltwater croc jane doe i would like to suggest we name her bindi after steve Irwin's daughter uh, bindi has been a very popular suggestion uh, as sort of saltwater croc is what the family is most connected to and supportive of feels good to be able to get involved again thank you no thank you for commenting uh, and some great ideas there really really do appreciate that uh, chewy gave Damien has now left me a comment saying, I think you should move forward 10 years and buy any, buy any of the squares in the top, I think maybe three to five, so you can move up into the middle of the zoo. Uh, and please name a crocodile Chewy. Um, she also left another comment uh, saying, in the next square, you could build um, a flamingo habitat, so you start putting in some big animals, uh, some other kind of animals and just reptiles, which is really, really interesting, actually, um, because it's nice to see that some people do want us to kind of maybe move away from the reptiles. But um, personally, I think the reptiles is is kind of where we're at at the minute i think that's the bread and butter of the of the um of the facility but we'll have to wait and see what happens when i get to the build section of today's episode um Anton Van Dijk, uh, amazing park. It would be very cool to add a petting zoo with some llamas, peafowls, a doll sheep. Uh, it's a cheap new exhibit and would attract a lot of families. You could charge extra for feeding and all. Uh, I do love the Nile expansion. It's so realistic. That's a really interesting comment, is a petting zoo. Now, I've been teasing doing one in my Highland uh, Zoo series. Haven't been able to do it. Um, but, you know, that could, that could potentially work, couldn't it? You know, like I'm looking at Square 10. It is quite a large square. Could we do that? But uh, the popular choice seems to be backstage area. So I am thinking that's potentially what we're going to be doing uh, in today's episode. Look at how busy the zoo is, ladies and gents. Uh, next up, we've got the last comment for today's episode. I did tell you, didn't I, ladies and gents? There was loads of comments this time around. And it comes from uh, Veganitis. I hope that's how you say that name. Uh, hey, fan Dan. I love the new content and community zoo. It looks absolutely phenomenal. And it's an amazing idea. First of all, Square 10 would be the best option as you could fit in a lot more backstage areas, such as security building, quarantine, breeding center, etc. Square 10 it could also give the saltwater crocodile a little bit more space. Uh, it'll be cramped if Bindi, the name a lot of people have suggested, 
suggesting for it finds a mate uh, the blank spot along the route that leads to the crocodile exhibit uh, could be filled with maybe a small statue uh, of a crocodile similar to the one of toby or a custom smoothie or even face painting caricature stand also supporting adding in more staff as well as well as upgrading uh, old ones uh, add in maybe a security guard with possibly a couple of security cameras started around the park more keepers and caretakers maybe three to five as well as upgrading the previous ones would be uh, w would be a considerable upgrade i'm also in favor of raising ticket prices to maybe 17 to 21 for adults 15 to 19 for children in actual zoos this would be considerably uh, be different as there are many things to take into account but seeing as this is a video hyper realism cannot truly be achieved i think this is a reasonable price um for the restaurant i would i would add in some condiments especially for the coffee shop as i personally think not everybody likes uh, their black uh, their cotton it likes black coffee it also irks me how the aldabra tortoise is the only animal without access to sunlight uh, so maybe a sunroof that could be open slash closed manually and or with buttons during cold months uh, could be added along with um, a ladder on the back of the building if the sunroof is, is manual and needs repairs or something along those lines also as a heads up you're missing drains in the gharial and saltwater crocodile pool sorry for the very long comment please keep going i'm thoroughly enjoying this series uh, you're putting out and it seems others have as you've gained a couple hundred subscribers and viewers uh, than i last saw uh, videos of yours um i really appreciate that that's a fantastic comment so much in there but um there are drains are there drains yeah look, there's drains there's one drain there and uh, there's one there so i did put the drains in um but i didn't show you guys the drains, I don't think. They're the little details, aren't they, ladies and gents? But, uh, yeah, some fantastic feedback and fantastic comment in there. So um, I think we can all sort of agree that, uh, you know, there's there's some stuff, ladies and gents. There really is some stuff that we need to... Um, that we need to be doing in today's episode but uh, we are going to just skip this forward now um, to the point where we're going to start building. We're going to have a little chat about what we're going to potentially build and then I'll do the build and then I'll be right back. So um, by the magic of editing, uh, we're going to get to the year 24 now. And so here we are, ladies and gents. We are here at the 21st of August, year 24. As you can see, the game's paused because I am getting ready uh, to build. Now, basically, what I've taken from all of those comments is obviously Square 10 was the popular choice. As we already know, we've unlocked that. But um, I actually think that a potential sort of backstage area with a Nile monitor enclosure would maybe be the best use of this space. I really, really do. I think that's kind of... That from the comments that you've left, uh, not only this episode, but the one before, the Nile monitor seems to be the really popular choice for the next animal to put in the zoo. But also, a lot of people do uh, agree that, um, you know, backstage is going to be really important. We need a staff centre. We need somewhere for them to go uh, to do the research, quarantine, you know, vets, you know, t take some time out and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to try to do is split this right down the middle. We'll do staff one side, and we'll try and do the monitor the other, uh, and just kind of see how we get on. But I think that's probably going to be the best direction to take the zoo in. So, um, yeah, I'm going to head off now to the build section. I've got a list of things to do in today's episode, so um, let's see how much I get of it done. And uh, we'll be right back, ladies and gents, so you can see um, what I've managed to achieve from your comments. And so here we are, ladies and gents, we're back for the build section. I'm basically going to go through everything that I've done. Um, and I'm also going to be talking to you about this space here as well. Um, because, yeah, I just feel like it was too many decisions that were being left to me. And it's a decision that I should be giving to you guys, the community. So we'll get into that uh, in a moment. But uh, let's touch upon all the things that I've done. As I said, I was going to do a big sort of like staff area. And we've managed to achieve that. But we'll come to that last because that basically that's where all the work has gone into for today's episode but there's many little details that have been added that make such a big impact to you know the realism and the facility you know in itself so the first is i added that exit sign that someone asked for simply just pointing towards the exit but i have done that um i have done the security cameras we've added numerous security cameras around the facility um which kind of get the keep this area sort of like covered uh, and we're going to make sure um that we're not going to have any rubbish going on in the zoo and when we get to the staff section we will be adding um 
We will be adding a security guard as well who will patrol the facility, which will be really, really great, and hopefully stuff won't be getting damaged anymore. Um, we move on into the zoo, and we're going to go to the restaurant, ladies and gents, because big changes have happened in the restaurant. Uh, as you can see, we've reworked this wall again. Um, this is just all in one colour now. I've you've done it like a signature wall. Um, we've got our menus, we've got, you know, how, how it works, uh, and then you've got sort of like some bins and a big, like, condiments uh, sort of, like, area where you can get you know your your ketchup your mustards your cutlery that sort of stuff and then you swing it around and we've actually put some seats inside as well now i don't know a bit more fancy uh, inside the facility because um i think it just it would be a little bit more uh, inside uh, so we've got a few tables here for people to sit at and uh I think we've we've made use of the space like really really well. We've also put a security camera in here as well, just to make sure there's no funny business going on. So yeah, the restaurant is pretty much done, I would say. Someone asked for a mosaic on the floor, but as we've gone with a wooden floor, uh, I decided against it. But the mosaic idea, I am going to put elsewhere into the zoo at a later date. Um, come outside, and uh, this area kind of remains the same. We move over here. I've not added any names to the Conservation Club, but I do have a list of names that need to be added. So what I'm going to do, if it's okay with you guys, is I'm going to add them between this episode and next one. I'll simply just come in one day, hit the pause button, and I'll do that. Believe it or not, these names actually take a little while to create uh, and to get them on the wall. So, um, yeah, I just kind of run out of time, basically. You, you're going to understand why I run out of time uh, very, very shortly. Um, we turn the corner, and we walk this way, and we're met with our first bit, our first bit of sort of like customizable sign i guess you could say and it is for croc corner now obviously i've came up with a name myself um this name will probably change as the zoo evolves because uh at the minute it is kind of like stuck into the corner of the facility but um yeah i've just done a little arrow telling you it's this way to croc corner it's a nice bit of custom work and uh i think it works really really nicely actually ladies and gents and that was obviously an idea by someone uh and i just kind of run with it now we come to this area i still haven't put anything here and uh, a lot of that ladies and gents is i run out of time but what i have done is i've added it to the list of what i want to put here and i will place it in next episode um someone asked for sort of like a survival guide type thing now my thinking is that we've made these interactive um boards here so that would kind of go in where that's concerned but i did start working on something and if it comes out nice maybe next episode i'll start placing them in but for now in this spot here just added some more seating uh, and, uh, you know, stuff like that. We turn the corner and you'll met with the brand new go away green walls on the Gariel's enclosure. Come around this way and we've got it on the salt waters as well. And uh, I think it really finishes those off really, really nicely. Uh, and then we come around here, ladies and gents, and uh, this is sort of like going to be a new area and the staff facility. But I need to do something else first before we get into that, because that's the big nitty gritty part. What I've done over here ladies and gents is as you can see this area has changed there used to be a building here and that building was the vet surgery and the trading um building now what i've done is move the vet surgery over into the big staff hub i think that makes sense to do that but we need we had the power and the water over here um so i've decided to disguise them now this was um a blueprint on the workshop and then i've edited it myself so i've basically taken what they've done and just added or taken away from it uh and managed to build this basically and i think this has come out Better than expected. I am just going to say that, ladies and gents. Really, really has come out better than expected. So you've got this like water facility plant here, um, and you, the water is hidden inside. And then uh, they're, they're joined as well by a nice piece of pipe in there. And then over here, you've got your power side of things. So, uh, yeah, that's our new sort of like water and power facility that we've got on site. And then the trading centre was just moved uh, next door to this kitchen that is over this side um, of the conservation park we've got two kitchens we've got one here and as you're going to see we've got one in our brand new staff hub but i actually think that really finishes this area off quite nicely and i quite like how open it is as well um because you know the staff would need a fair bit of space uh for doing things and whatnot and uh yeah i really really like that little addition um to the zoo then we come over here and this is where all of my time went this is the biggest part uh, of today's episode and it's one of the bigger expansions believe it or not that we've done you know, um, this this did not take half as long as this. 
which may surprise some of you, but I wanted this building to be super realistic. I want this, I want this project to be really realistic. Um, and, and, and so I've taken my time, probably a bit too much time on certain things. So now you are met with a brand new security barrier, ladies and gents, and security facility. Uh, I've done all the appropriate fencing. We've done a bit more of a heavy duty wall here as well, because we don't want people getting into this part of the conservation uh, facility. So you're coming this way. The loading bay has now changed. We've moved it back a little bit, fenced it uh, all off, um, and then you would turn this corner, and this is your way into the staff car park. But uh, this is the uh, security sort of like depot sort of point uh, for it. We've put some little custom cameras on there, uh, but you would go inside, and uh, this is the security office. So he's got all his screens so he can watch everything going on. Uh, he's got some stuff to keep his files, a little, uh, little cupboard to keep his keys and things, and then, uh, yeah, he would come up to the first window if he's inside he can actually slide this across and talk to the people outside um, or he can come out this door uh, make sure they are who they say they are and then press a little button let them in and they can do what they want to do uh, so he's got his little security checkpoint took far longer than it really should have that little building but uh, I wanted it to be really realistic and we come this way and I'm really really proud of this building I am just going to throw this out there it's very unique and I've made it look very very different now I wanted this to stand out from the rest of the facility um, you've got to think that the rest of the facility has been here over 20 years and then they decided to build a brand new sort of like staff building I wanted it to be really really modern and sort of like more with the times and so that's why I've gone with the the look that I have but we've got the staff car park here first and then well, I'm going to walk you in as if you were a member of staff so you would park your car and then you would walk up and around this way you met with a very very sort of like pretty uh, entrance way uh, a nice tree there and then you turn the corner and you are in the staff facility ladies and gents so you are first met with this sort of like mezzanine area um, I'm going to add a statue here um, but uh, I didn't really know what statue I wanted to go with and then you would turn the corner and then you decide which area you need to go to uh, to get to work basically ladies and gents so you've got your staff room uh, this side um, and then you turn around you've got your kitchen uh, this side Next door to the kitchen, we've got a small research facility. Now, the reason why I went with the smaller one is that we are still a relatively small conservation facility, and I don't think that we'd need, a, you know, a mass amount of sort of like research facility just yet, but we can always expand on this, or we can add a bigger one uh, somewhere else in the zoo at a later date. But for now, I thought that, you know, just to keep with the realism, this would be, you know, substantial. Um, here is the quarantine um, facility for now. That's kind of like what we're going to do is, like a very sort of like small indoor one most of the animals that we've got at the facility are relatively small and could probably be kept inside um for now you've got all your lockers um for the staff and then you come to the vets um the vet facility, uh, there's a little notice board outside telling them everything that's going on for the week. And you will also see that there are little uh, swipe points as the staff wouldn't need swipe cards to get into all the buildings. And this is basically the vet's facility there. So, yeah, it's uh, very realistic. I wanted all the indoors to be detailed up as well. You can, you can see all the aircon units all running uh, along the ceiling. Uh, we've done lots of detailing. wanted it to look really, really nice. Uh, you turn this way, though, ladies and gents. We've also got an outdoor area for our staff uh, so they can come out here and they can have a little sit down and a little break uh, should they need it um, and um, yeah I think this come out really really nice and what I want to do as well is I want to kind of like show you uh, the detail of this building uh, from this side now obviously I've had to really squeeze it up against uh, against the wall so you can't really see all of its beauty just yet but I'll just move this temporarily but um, yeah this is kind of like the side of the building as well as you can see just really nice detailing nice wood on this side and what, I've not, and what I like is the contrast of the wood and the plain walls um, I think it really looks nice and also we put this glass area in at the top so they get pl plenty of natural light penetrating that first area of the building before you have to walk in and they get to all the rooms where they only get the light through the windows and stuff but uh yeah i've done all the roof is all different levels and it took me a very very long time this building but it's one of the finest buildings I've made and I'm even potentially thinking about putting it on the workshop and I don't ever do that ladies and gents because I just don't think anyone would want to download my work but um, I'm definitely definitely going to be putting that on the workshop but uh, let's address the elephant in the room on why there wasn't an animal added in today's episode and why we have this piece of space um, left here now basically as you can see I started sticking the path in ready to put an animal sort of in this area but believe it or not one this area is a lot tighter than it looks and two 
Um, I was doing some research on the monitor lizards, and the majority of them are kept inside because they're quite the escape artists. They're very, very, very intelligent animals, and uh, they have a way of getting out of enclosures and stuff when they're kept outside. Um, and so the majority of facilities prefer to keep them indoors, and then they have a small outdoor area for some of the larger species, um, but that are covered over with glass. So uh, technically... They're kept indoors. They're, they're, it's very difficult to keep these animals outside. Now, I felt like this was too many decisions and too much of a thought process for me to go through and to be making, considering that this is a community build. I really feel like that's a decision that you guys should be making. If we stick with, you know, the, the, the really realistic theme and go with an indoor enclosure. Now, I tried to create something indoors and it was a bit tight. It was really, really tight here. Um, didn't really supply too much room for the guests to be able to walk up and be able to look and it didn't really supply the animal with too much room i also attempted an outdoor area that was served uh, the purpose a bit better and uh, gave the animal room but didn't look good it really didn't it looked pretty horrific because with these star fences here you can't really go higher than the fences, um, you know, with any of the enclosure walls. But if a, if a member of the public stands here and looks out, they can see all of this, all of this staff up. And it, it really didn't look nice. It really didn't look pretty. So I just felt like it was too much, too many decisions for me to make. And really, those decisions should be put in the hands of you, the viewer. So really, I think between next episode and this one... You really need to kind of let me know what you want done with this area uh, more than anything. Um, you know, it could be a number of things. We could have a nice garden here where people sit or we could just plant this area up quite heavily to disguise, um, you know, disguise all of this stuff. Um, we could have a small little I don't know, like a little snack shack or something. There's so many things we could try to put in the animal, but, you know, you guys could be really precise about how you want me to try and fit it in here. Or we could just use this as a natural pathway into a new area of the zoo. There's just so many things you could do with it, but it's just... Basically, this took up a lot more room than I thought it would, but I feel like this was more important than putting a new animal in the zoo, and that's why I kind of made the decision uh, that I did. But that's that, ladies and gents. I hope you like the new addition, uh, but we are now going to move forward into the live section of today's episode because uh, we've got some animal and some staff management to get to. And so here we are, ladies and gents, in the live section of uh, today's episode. Now, I've got a list of things that we need uh, to get through. I've got a little thing I need to talk to you about where the conservation wall is concerned and a few little things that I think uh, are really vital to bring to your uh, attention before next episode. They're not so much park problems, but maybe things that you need to brainstorm ready for next time. But um, let's uh, get going, shall we? Let's get these bits and bobs uh, done in the park uh, that we we need to do so first and foremost i think we are going to do the staff um because that's really really important as you can see the original macazas have now been trained up to the master level um Everybody else is on two stars and uh, they will all continue to be trained up over time because that's what you guys have asked for now we're going to put one more caretaker into uh, the zoo because basically what I'm doing is basing it on averages from what everybody has said. So we're going to go with one more caretaker. Uh, we're going to go with one security guard. Um, we're going to go with one more mechanic um and uh that's that now we already have a vet ladies and gents i should have mentioned this at the beginning of today's episode but that was actually asked for last time uh so the vet has uh, been placed in um in the zoo i might have even mentioned that in last episode but i can't remember uh, and now we're going to put two more keepers in the zoo as well um and these keepers are going to be the uh children of the original macazas so we're going to change their surnames and they obviously had a daughter and a son a, a bit like the Irwins so that's quite interesting isn't it uh, so uh, we've got uh, Darren Macaza and we've got a Shelley Macaza so there we go the Macazas are in and I'm actually going to train both of those guys uh, to get their training up a little bit so we've now got four keepers two uh, cleaners two mechanics uh, one security guard a number 
of uh, oh actually we need to add one more vendor because someone said about adding them for um, shift rotation so we might have more vendors than we have shops but they're there for the rotation which I thought was actually a really good idea and I've never really thought about that myself so we've got four vendors and we've got the one vet so we are very very well staffed now so that's that covered ladies and gents which is really really good uh, now the second thing that I'm going to cover is uh, animal names so let's jump on in and change uh, the names of our creatures in the zoo. Now, the Salty, wherever she is, uh, is going to be given the name Bindi. It was the most popular suggestion uh, where her name uh, was concerned. So we are going to rename her to Bindi. So there we have it, ladies and gents. Beautiful, beautiful Bindi right there. Uh, so that's great to see. Um, but I got so many other name suggestions that I'm actually going to rename so many other animals as well because I really, really like them. So we are going to jump on over into the Gariel exhibit and I'm going to rename the two female um, Gariels. We're going to rename one of them um, uh, Chewy because that was a name and I actually think that that is a perfect name for a crocodile uh, and uh, the other one is we're going to name the other female Stephanie which was a play on Steve wasn't it uh, as in Steve Irwin so it's a nice nod so we've got Stephanie and we've got uh, Chewy and I actually think it's really nice that uh, it's getting so personable now with um, with the animals ladies and gents and there is one more animal that we're going to rename but we don't have her yet and we're going to get her very very shortly now um, I just want to cover that the Malgaria has been put on contraception uh, the reason for this is you're going to see that the numbers of young in here have just completely exploded and it's got a little bit out of hand and I hope you guys don't mind me doing that. I think that what we really need to do is wait until these get a bit older so we can transport them out of the zoo um, and start that sort of conservation breeding project um, where the gharials are uh, sort of concerned. Uh, next up, we're going to add uh, an animal. Uh, no, next up, actually, we're going to do some animal management. We'll add the animal uh, last, I think. So we're going to do some animal management. We are overstocked in lots of the enclosures again. Uh, the Aldabra tortoise is probably going to be the next one where we have to stick a contraceptin as well because look how many uh, Aldabra tortoises we have. It's got a little bit out of hand, uh, but yeah, as you can see, look how many uh, look how many baby uh, gharials there are. It's just ridiculous. Um, but we need to sort out some of our exhibit um, smaller exhibit animals because um, they've got a little out of hand as well. So we are going to um, trade out the majority of these uh, animals I'm actually going to keep one of the young really young females back um, because it will be nice to keep a captive bred one uh, for the future but we're going to just move these uh, these four on so let's release these guys to the wild we're going to release them to the wild for now for conservation points because as you can see money is um, just of a premium at the moment 440,000 we spent about a hundred thousand on the build by the way I didn't mention how much money we had um, before doing that which I usually do so I do apologize for that but uh, yeah, we, we've done about 100,000 of our money, but we are in a very, very positive position uh, right now. The other animal that we need to sort out is that of the uh, golden uh, frogs, and these breed crazy, crazy. Um, so we're just going to take uh, all of the really, really young ones, um, and we're going to trade them out of the zoo. I'm keeping this one back because I believe that was one of the original five, is that right? No, it's not. So one, two, three, four, five. They're the original fives. So we're going to trade these bunch out and we're going to get 13 conservation points for them. And I believe that's it. There's no more animals that we need to move on uh, from the zoo. But that gets our animal numbers down a little bit, manages it a bit better, which is uh, great to see. Now, one addition that you wanted was the hashtag for Toby got trending. Uh, hashtag girl for Toby, I should say, got trending. And so we are going to visit the, tra uh, the animal market and we're going to see if we can find him a girlfriend, ladies and gents, because I think he deserves it. Not only is he the zoo's ambassador, but uh, he's looking a little lonely in there, isn't he? So the giant Galapagos tortoise and uh, what have we got available? Oh, they're pretty terrible, aren't they? I think we'll leave this. We'll leave this time to tick down and we'll revisit this in a moment. I guess while we're waiting for that, I can talk to you about the Conservation Club and what it's going to take to make it in. So basically, I'm going to put some rules in place for the Conservation Club. I basically can't put every single name of every single person that comments on the... Uh, on the, on the um, on the series but what i am going to do is if you've at least commented twice and i've noticed that you have then your name 
can be one of them that makes it onto the wall. But also, if you're one of these people that supplies a really, really good piece of narrative or a great idea, that's how you're going to make it on. So, you know, it's going to be the people that really you know, put some effort into their comments, the people that revisit this series multiple times, they're going to be the ones that really make it onto the Conservation Club. Now, as I've already said in today's episode, I didn't quite, quite get round to adding some names to this, but if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to do it between, uh, you know, this episode and the next one, because there's a few names that really deserve to go on there. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll be working on that. But basically, that's how I'm looking at the Conservation Club. That's kind of how I want it to work. Um, so... Yeah, it'll be it'll be great. We're gonna have loads of these scattered all over, you know, the zoo, and uh, I think that they'll be really really cool little, you know, additions uh, to to the project. Uh, let's just revisit this and see if uh, we've got another one in here. I believe we have. They're not very good. They're not very good. Um, I wanted to. I wanted a really good one in the zoo. Like longevity, immunity, they're really bad. Fertility's not very good there. Well, we can go over some other stuff why we wait a little bit longer and we'll we'll just wait and see so um basically ladies and gents i wanted to talk to you about stuff that's not necessarily park problems but just things that maybe you need to start thinking about for you know the bigger picture where the zoo is concerned now clearly like we've got some space left here so you really need to start thinking about how you want to feel that but if we are going to start expanding the zoo i think you really need to start thinking about the bigger picture clearly the narrative of the story at the moment is jcp was very much set up by the Macaza family to care for you know injured uh, or unwanted reptiles it became a you know rescue center at the beginning and slowly turned into the conservation park that we we see and know and love today um but obviously the macazas have got you know big big plans and they eventually want to move on into you know the bigger zoo market and you know have bigger uh, animals uh, at the facility um, as well whether they be rescue or traded or shared throughout the zoos and stuff like that that's kind of the narrative of the story that we've got at the moment now if we are to move forward past the reptile stage um i think that obviously there's things that need to be thought about there's plans that need to be put in place and uh, at the moment i think you've actually been very very clever about the squares that you've chosen but moving forward you're gonna have to be even more clever in my opinion now when we get it when this it, when this uh you know when this facility expands and when it starts getting bigger, this entrance facility is not going to be able to service the amount of people that we're going to have visiting the visit in the centre. On average, we have about seven hundred people, you know, visiting at any one time, which is quite a lot. It is quite a big turnover, uh, even for a facility of this size. So, um, obviously, the entrance is something you're going to have to seriously, seriously think about at a later date. Do we go with something big? Do we go with something grand? Or do we try to redesign what we've already got and um, just make it bigger from, from here? Things can evolve. Things can get knocked down. Um, you know, I have ideas of what I would do with this. You know, if it was me, if I was the one, you know, commenting. But uh, that's something that basically you guys really, really need to think about, in my opinion. Um, you know, the other one is that, you know, how far do we really realistically think we need to get before we start introducing those animals? Now, I'm going to read out some of the animals that are on the waiting list uh, for the zoo. And the reason I'm call calling it the waiting list is because these are just animals that you guys have suggested now the monitor lizard kind of fits in with the project that we've already got as i've already covered in today's episode i wanted to put it in here didn't quite work out for us though um what i am going to do just so i've got it up on the screen ladies and gents is i'm gonna leave this up oh have we got another one we have oh my god they're terrible they're absolutely terrible and the times on them are ridiculous refresh the list again see if that does anything for us no, it does not. I don't think we're going to be able to wait seven minutes. So the, uh, adding a girl for Toby might have to wait. I might have to do it between episodes if that's all right with you guys because uh, I've got other stuff that I want to talk to you about. But uh, yeah, the waiting list, obviously we've got the monitor lizard. We're going to put it in here, but we weren't sure about how we were going to do it. But we've also got the flamingo, the deaf adder, the lemurs, the peacocks, and the capuchins. They're all animals that have been asked for that you would like in the project. Now, what you've got to think about is the space that these animals require, whereabouts they are usually found in, you know, bigger zoos and bigger concerts conservation park and so you've got to really think about your planning uh going forward uh you know for the project basically ladies and gents and i just kind of wanted to bring those two kind of things to your opinion you know to your attention that you know 
you're doing a fantastic job. I actually think this facility looks unbelievable. This is one of the best things I've ever built. And it's all based off of your comments and off of your feedback, which blows my mind. But you've really also, as well as that, got to start thinking, uh, you know, basically about the bigger picture. But um, as far as these uh, tortoises are concerned, we've got another male there, but I wanted a female. I wanted to get a female in. And um, maybe this one. Maybe this one. The longevity is not quite there, but at least the fertility is. Let's get this one. Just so we can do this for today's episode, uh, she's going to make her way into um, the zoo. And we're going to wait until she arrives, ladies and gents. And, uh, you know, when she does, we're going to rename her and then we're going to sign out uh, today's episode. But, yeah, just those points I've just made, uh, you know, about the facility. Um, just try to think about that. Um, obviously, Keep getting your comments in about what you'd like to see in next episode, new plans, new ideas, where you think the conservation part needs to go next um, and stuff like that. Um, but I really, honestly, guys, I can't believe the work that you've done already in the comments and the idea that you've given me. Like just as we rotate around, just look how fantastic, look how fantastic the facility looks. And it, for me, looks so realistic. But our brand new tortoise has arrived, ladies and gents. So we are going to rename her and we're going to rename her Terry. And it's after, obviously, Steve Owen's wife it was another name that was um that was suggested and I actually think that Terry and Toby makes quite a good little combination so there you go Toby you got yourself a girlfriend my friend crack on um I hope you have a, a, a long lasting love with each other for the remaining time uh, at the zoo so it's nice we've got two Galapagos tortoises uh ladies and gents so we're now going to sign out today's episode in the way that we always do uh, you're going to see it above my friends the poll uh which is simply do we move forward 10 years a simple yes or a no uh will suffice where that's concerned and if you are one of the people that says yes uh you need to pick yourself a square that we're going to expand to so obviously we've got square one square two square three square four square five square six square seven square eight square nine and this one is now square ten so get voting ladies and gents uh, on yes or no if you say yes pick your square and uh, maybe next time we will be unlocking said square but uh, let's just zoom back in uh, so we can sign out today's uh, episode uh, once again thanks for all your amazing comments and feedback they've been absolutely amazing they've helped us build uh, a brand new part to the facility which i'm actually going to show you ladies and gents because we can still show you it with all the action jackson going on um uh, make sure you comment below on things you'd like to see next episode or improvements you'd like to see made to the park continue to get involved as much as possible uh, and uh, yeah make sure you vote on both of the polls from today's episode but we're done and dusted if you're new please consider it and subscribe button but like on the video if you've enjoyed it hit the bell notification button to never miss an episode you'll find all my socials and my discord in the description below as well as the link that is now on the steam uh, workshop for the gridded system should you want to play along and have a go at this yourself but my friends until next time you've all been legends and uh, you make sure you stay an extra and i'll see you real real soon